Rebonjour, Duncan. Bonjour. How are you? How are you Fine. feeling after the big show? Uh, very excited. Great. Everybody was saying that they were impressed by your performance. Good. But I hope they. Th I hope they were more impressed by the predictions than by the performance. I think it was both. Good. Okay, so we have some questions from the web. Okay, uh, the only thing is, uh, we've got. I have to go do a radio interview in seven minutes. Can okay. I take two? Yes. So. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Okay, so I'm going to take one from uh, Christine Simard from Radio Canada, which is, what is the future of web, diffi web diffusion, like web streaming, uh, in 2010? Uh, there will be a lot of it. Uh, web streaming is going to continue to be something that is. Uh, difficult to provide uh, at a cost-effective basis. Much of them, although YouTube is now much closer to profitability than it has been, live web streaming is going to remain uh, difficult. I think it's going to get more costly. I think carriers are going to push back on web streaming and demand higher prices for it, especially for higher quality. So I think that we are going to have, as the, as the networks get increasingly congested throughout 2010, I think we're going to see the price per bit rise which will make uh, the cost of web streaming uh, go up. Okay, great. And we had another comment about Twitter. Everybody was like, oh my God, I can't believe Duncan doesn't like Twitter, etc. Because right now, for example, Michelle said that uh, today what generated most feedback, feedback is, is Twitter and that 20% of... Uh, the, the, the Twitter people are really influenced. Um, you know what, as I said, I'm biased about Twitter. Twitter is a real phenomena, and I think that for corporations and for governments, Twitter is an incredibly powerful tool. But as we look at the growth in Twitter over the last year, I wonder, will it go to the next level? Will it become a Facebook-sized community? And my hunch is no. I think that the demands of Twitter, the need to continuously be updating, to react in real time, to not annoy your audience, as I discovered last year, I think it it creates a barrier to entry for Twitter. Whereas on Facebook, if you don't keep your Facebook profile updated for a month or two, nobody cares, as long as you do it intermittently. And I think that in 2010, Twitter will primarily be a tool used by uh, corporations to, uh, to track a subset of the world community. So Twitter is what, 50 million people now? Let's say it gets to 100 million. I don't see it becoming a billion. Whereas I see other social media, not just Facebook, but things like Facebook, as being a billion people and Twitter being a hundred million. That's not a criticism of Twitter. It's saying maybe that's its natural constituency. Um, what would be a good example? Running marathons. Lots of people are joggers. Very few people run marathons. Okay, great. So I know we have you have an interview. Yes. So um, maybe a last, last, last one. I think one of them was around Quebec. Um, en quoi le Québec est bien ou mal placé pour mettre en place des innovations? Do you think innovations, like technological innovation, um, like Quebec is well positioned to be able to deliver that? Absolutely, both in the technology, telecommunications, and even in the media scene. So uh, we often know how Quebec has uh, been a center of innovation. I mean, the wonderful, you've got you know many, many languages here. You have a supportive provincial government. You have new venture capital funds being created. So uh, you heard Robert Nardi talk about how a third of the Fast 50 winners from uh, this year were from Quebec. So I continue to expect to see Quebec be a center of excellence for innovation, both in Canada and worldwide. Okay, great. Thank you, so Thank you so much.